morning. Welcome to New Hope Presbyterian Church virtual service. Uh, we are gathered together on May 31st. Where, man, oh man, where has the month of May gone? And today is one of those special days. Uh, today is Pentecost, the traditional celebration of the birth of the church when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in the gathering. As a pastor, I look forward to this day because this is one of those days we get to wear our red stoles. We don't get to wear red very often, but today is the color for the day is, is red. So wherever you're at, wherever you're watching this, uh, whether it's in your living room or your kitchen or the porch or whatever, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, would you pray with me? Great loving God, what a gift. The gift of your church. The ecclesia of the gathering, of your spirit, of your son. Lord, we gather, we continue to gather remotely. Gathering in your spirit. That while we are apart in you, we are together. Lord, lift up our hearts to you. Encourage us. Help us to hear your word as is proclaimed. That your spirit Continue its transforming works in us, in our lives, and in the nations. Lord, we pray this day, a day like any other, and a day not like any other. We pray to see your mighty hand at work. We pray to see the healing of the inflicted, the protection of the healthy, the lifting up of those who serve. Lord, let your word, your grace, and your love be known throughout the land. All of these things we pray in your name. Amen. The first scripture for this morning comes from Psalm 104. Hear the word of the Lord. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number. Living things, both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Hear the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Argia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders, God, in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Peter addressed the crowd. And Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, 
fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to share a little story with you this morning, my friends, on this Pentecost Sunday. There was this monk who was walking through the woods one day, and just on his little way, little, little, little travels there. And along the way, he came across this gemstone, this precious gemstone. He picked it up, looked at it, and said, wow, this is really cool. So he stuck it in his little knapsack and went on his little way there. Well, later in the day, he came across this traveler. This person was very hungry, clothes worn and ragged, clearly not in good shape, asking for food. So the monk took off his knapsack, reached in, and was sharing his food. And in the process, he said, you know, he reached down there and he found that gemstone at the bottom of his pack and he gave it to that traveler. Traveler having gotten his food and that gemstone, they parted ways. A couple days later, that traveler came back across that mall. He said, Sir, I want to thank you for what you did. And I was wondering if you could give me something that you have that is more valuable, more precious than that gemstone. The monk looked at him with a questioning look, and the gentleman said, Can you give me that which prompted you? to give me that gemstone. Now that's an interesting request, don't you think? Don't give me that physical, valuable. What caused you to give it to me? Hey, it's Pentecost, the recognized birth of the church, the ecclesia, the gathering. And today may be a little bit more of a special birthday. Like many birthdays throughout our land right now, there's not too many gatherings. Very few people are gathering around the birthday cakes and blowing out the candles. These little celebrations are smaller. As we are now re being called to reflect that the church is not the building. It's not. The building is a place. It's a place where we gather. But this is not the church. The church is the people. But the people were there, weren't they? People were there. The Spirit came up upon the people. And so we reflect, what is the church? It's been a rough almost 11, 12 weeks as we've been social distancing. And the church has been searching for itself. Not that the church hasn't been there. But we're struggling to find new ways to be the church, to be the gathering. This past week... The headlines were replete with some horrible stories. The death of George Floyd, the incident in Central Park with Christian and Amy Cooper, violence in the streets. Pastors are struggling today. What should we preach on? What is the message we want to focus on? There's so many things and so many challenges to be put forth and to remind us about. It seems, since we've been social distancing, we've almost forgotten about the world that it was before. Forgotten about some of the messages of social justice and poverty, of human rights and being respectful. We've gotten so focused on the virus, we've forgotten that people are still people and the world is still the world. And the question persists, what is the church? I would offer, humbly, realizing that there will be those of my colleagues and my friends that would challenge me, and I welcome that, but I would humbly offer that the church 
is God's chosen, sent out to proclaim the reign of Christ. That's our job. It's God's mission, but we participate in it. And as I look around, that's what we should be doing. With the guidance of the Holy Spirit, proclaiming the reign of Christ. The rule of God's law of love. So often, humanity chooses to ascribe to higher authorities, political authorities, economic authorities, worshiping the almighty dollar, um, community authorities, and we forget that there is that highest of authorities, Christ. And we, the ecclesia, the gathering, are the church with Christ as our head. We are called in all times and all places to make that proclamation of Jesus Christ as King. To proclaim and to show the love, mercy, patience of our Lord Jesus. These are not things we choose on our own. We did not choose the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come upon the church of Jesus Christ. And even in these difficult times, we are not permitted to swerve or to avoid our calling. It is in times such as these that the church was created. Times such as now as COVID-19, such as community differences, racial injustice, violation of human rights, wherever they are that the church has been called in to proclaim Jesus. These things we cannot ignore. We don't get to choose. We love because God first loved us. We were chosen. We didn't discover God. God revealed God's self. God is the initiator. We only respond. Pastors and my friends everywhere are struggling. How do you finally one day get people to realize that people are people created in the images of the divine, worthy of respect, worthy of love and kindness? What's it going to take? Well, I can't answer that question. But I can say that there is reason to celebrate church, the gathering. For it's when people of love come together that amazing things happen. It would have been incredible to be there on that first Pentecost. When they came out, and they're celebrating in such a way that the spectators are going, are they drunk? The response is, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. We're not even drinking yet. We're just that happy. We're that overjoyed to be part of something unique and special. Nations rise and fall. But the church is still here. And the church will still be here tomorrow. And the next day. And we will still be proclaiming the reign of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. My friends, celebrate Pentecost. But do so with joyful hearts. As we take on the challenge of proclaiming our Lord and Savior. Whether we're proclaiming that in terms of social justice, rights, poverty, good old-fashioned kindness, let us proclaim it with joyful hearts. Can you pray with me? Great and loving God, the challenges we face seem insurmountable. Violence in the streets, racial injustice, hatred, divisions, political, economic, geopolitical. Sometimes we find ourselves wondering when will it all end. Gracious loving Lord, we ask that you grant us your patience. Give us a reminder of the hope that is found in you. That your kingdom present now, but one day be 
fully revealed to all of us. But that day when we all join hands, regardless of the pigmentation of our skin, without regard for gender, without regard for sexual orientation, without regard for anything other than the fact that we are all your children. Let us join hands singing and praying, being thankful for each moment, coming together with love, joy, and a forbearance, and an understanding that tomorrow will be better because you've got this. Lord, give us your eyes to see one another as you do. Hearts to love one another as you love us. Lord, grant us that the peace that you left with us may persevere through eternity. It is in your saving and holy name we pray. Amen. My friends, may this Pentecost Sunday find you thankful, safe, and joyful in the moments that God has gifted you. My friends, may the peace of our Lord be with you all the days of your life. Amen.